Hey guys, this is Maui Snake, and today I wanted to bring you guys a scouting report of Favin. So what this video and maybe future ones will show you guys is how one player plays multiple positions on multiple maps. His CT side positions, his spots on defaults, and you guys will just get a taste for what Favin brings in a normal competitive setting. And the reason I picked Favin is that he's really just been the standout player for Sprout. And they're a team that not many people are looking at, but they are in fact the second best team in Germany right now. In the past six months, Favin has a 1.17 rating, which is really great. And the fact is that he doesn't actually drop off too much against better opponents. You'll see that actually against top five opponents, he has a 1.10 rating in 10 maps, 1.06, which is a little bit of a drop off against 10 top 10 opponents. But really, actually, it's pretty consistent throughout most of these rankings right now. But if you look at the other players on his team, you'll see Slacks is right there with a 1.12, although there is a pretty steep drop off after that. Speedy, Dennis, and Cressy all just barely above a 1.0 rating but here you're going to see all the spots that Favin plays on every map for Sprout except they do not play overpass that is usually that is their permaban map so we will be skipping that enjoy Favin's role on the CT side of Dust2 is more or less the secondary B player and sometimes he'll pick up the op actually as well as he can frequently find himself as the secondary opper for this team behind Slacks so on this round here, what we're going to be seeing is the way that Favin just kind of rotates between mid B and actually playing the B site alongside his teammate in Speedy, and the way he's able to play off of teammates in a cool, calm, and collected fashion, along with some solid mechanics. So what we're going to see is that he just jiggles here towards middle as they don't have any sort of information in that area. Looks like he was considering to potentially make a play towards that spot, but actually it is Speedy who gets first contact, and now Favin with really quick timing will react to this by throwing his Molotov down as Gambit were trying to go for a contact play of sorts into that B site and Favin recognizes that that mid area could be actually compromised so he tucks himself into the Humvee position and Dennis picks up his actually his mid spot so now this position that actually Favin is in gains a lot of value and what we're going to be seeing is that in his cool clock calm collected fashion he waits for the flash coming out from Dennis and he's able to just pick up all three kills really good stuff from them just good from Favin good repositioning good job waiting for the flash and that's really what Favin is able to bring there on the CT side I noticed that he gets flash uh, assisted a lot on this side and he really makes the most of it in those just little just brief moments in time on Dust 2 I would call Favin a pack player in that he's generally in a group with one or more players kind of accomplishing whatever the objective is of the round. It's rarer on Dust2 for teams to just have really strict T-side default roles. So what you'll see here is that he goes for an early duel towards Long, doesn't actually quite find it, but Cressy and him still want to take this kind of space, and so they will wait the smoke out towards Long as they still want to take this space away from Namiga to enable themselves to go for a 3-2 split onto the A bomb site. So Cressy will be the first one out here. Favin is posting up to hold his corner angle. They actually won't find a kill as Box tries or does actually find that kill onto Cressy. And Favin recognizes that this is a pretty unfavorable decision. And even though the numbers game would generally say you should just try to go for a fight if the CTs are in a bad situation, he knows that that's very unlikely. So he'll actually reroute. And because they already have cat control, as we can see there on the radar, it is actually not too bad of an idea for them to just reroute this whole play. So what we'll see is that Favin, because he has all the utility, he will actually become the support in this round for the team as he will throw the first flash out for them. This is just a general deep flash for them, and then a scaling flash for them on the corner. So this actually, this flash actually got messed up as it hit the wall, but then you see his Molotov as it burns behind there. That's not perfect utility, I would say, and I think that might actually be because Favin is generally not going to be the guy throwing all the nades. So that's something that he could definitely work on in the future, but this is something where he really excels at, and this is why I will be showing you guys this round. The fact that he's in a 3v2 with Slax, who is on the bomb site right now, and Slax is going to be in a very difficult predicament, but Favin finds a really good timing to try to help his teammate out, and even though Slax dies, Favin finds those two quills, kills in quick succession, and then he's able to play the 1v1 just exactly how he needs to. The bomb is planted more or less for him. The flash isn't very good from box, and Favin's able to win the 1v3. This is a round where Favin actually shows some of his versatility in that he can be a pack player. He can work the bait situations out pretty well, but at the same time, he can actually be a really strong player 
regardless of the position. So here, this time around, they find an opening pick towards long A, and he throws the bomb away to his teammates, has a little bit of trouble with it, and then he actually throws his deagle away on top of that, wants the pistol from Dennis though, so we'll still wait for that. But now he just waits in pit, and this is him on a set, what is essentially a hard lurk position. Um, it's, the Namiga knows that Sprout has taken long in this case, but Favin just plays the waiting game in this circumstance, and recognizing that the pressure from his teammates will force the hand of Namiga to either fight towards Cat or to fight towards Long or trying to just take some space back in general. Favin just has very good timing with this, and because of his patience, he is really rewarded here. So you'll see that Favin just waits and waits and waits, takes down one player, and using his great aim is actually able to get a second in super quick succession. That is actually very difficult, the fact that he's able to find those kills so fast. And now Sprout, the whole round is open up because Favin just picked a really good timing and all in all just waited based off of the position that he had and didn't overextend too early in the round. On top of that, he finds the kill on the entry to the site. Probably would have been traded out either way, but just more insurance on the fact that they do, in fact, win the round. So... Just showing that Favin actually has more than just entry frag capabilities or baiting capabilities. He can actually do it all. So Mirage is one of Sprout's worst maps. And what we're going to be seeing here is how Favin looks uncharacteristically uncomfortable on this map. Despite the fact that in other anchor positions that we've seen him on, he's very willing to brawl and looks in control of a lot, a lot of the situations. So the first fight comes his way and he's able to take down the player here actually at Sandwich. And so actually, there's quite a few options for how he could play this out. He has some utility himself, he has a smoke, he has a molotov, a lot of anchors would just drop this at their feet with a right click, a lot of anchors would wait for a player like Slacks to flash for him to peek. This time around, Favin lets the kind of pressure of the situation get the better of him. And this is just super rare for him overall, and I think it's probably why it, Mirage is kind of one of the lower rated maps for him, where he has only in the past six months a 1.06. And that's not like a bad rating. But for a player of Favin's caliber, it is a little bit concerning. And you'll see that he just continues to fight and doesn't wait for any kind of utility, doesn't decide to use his own, and just falls after getting the one kill. It's nice that he has the aim to find that one, but it is strange that he keeps on fighting and fighting and fighting, as opposed to using some kind of utility or maybe waiting for his teammates a little bit more, trying to delay some more time. Favin really likes to lurk out of A ramp on the T side of Mirage. And I mean, he really likes to do it. He does it quite a bit. And it allows Sprout to play Mirage in probably an inconsistent fashion, but at the same time, an explosive one. And you'll see how he's able to do it in this round here. So just pressuring out by himself. Uh, well, he does have a teammate behind him. I mean, but he's fairly dry about this. Kind of flubs the molly there. Throws a nade. And just makes his way out towards Sandwich. And now he's just going to post up for about... 40 seconds just waits and waits and waits and eventually he is gifted a sound cue from jerry what's that what's that in my right ear jerry you're throwing your smoke right now you're not ready for this oh what's that jerry you're running back towards mid favin he hears that he's very telegraphed and he reaps the rewards of jerry's elephant thunder footing and then he continues to push into window, finds the kill on the flit, and at this point, the round is over. Sprout can mid-round around the fact that Favin has gained so much space for them, and he just likes to really pressure. This round, you'll see where Favin really likes to play on the CT side. You'll see that Sprout are in a force by this round, and the rotation that they like to make when they know that the T's can cross towards lower. There are smokes outside right now, Favin just playing on A, and he gets a lot of freedom in terms of his choices. Uh, I've seen him play towards mini, I've seen him play towards vent, behind the silo, in the rafters, on top of hut. He really has every option, and I feel like Sprout don't have necessarily as set positions um, as other teams do on nuke. And so the way you'll see this play out is that he's able to recollect an AK in radio room. And Favin, he's never really the first man in. It's very rare for that to happen. He usually lets a player go in front of him in situations such as this, whether it's on the T side when he's attacking, or it's on a retake and you'll see that he gets to bait out Cressy. I think that's, I think that Sprout know that Favin is generally a win condition for them in rounds like this, and he is incredibly skilled at trade fragging. So we're gonna see some of that skill on display here as he's able to get that get that kill on a Jo. And then he actually reads the position from Box, which is huge, and then gets the third kill onto MDS. So this would be a more typical round for Sprout and Favin in that he's 
frequently the lobby lurker for the team. You'll see that on the radar, all of his teammates are working outside right now. Speedy, Cressy, Dennis, they're all just trying to make something happen there. And so Favin just gets to be this kind of pressure lurker. A lot of the times he'll like to fight towards Hut, and he actually takes some risks at times, even pushing through smokes, as you will see in a round such as this, where he just catches Lollipop, the star player for Namiga, off guard, in that he walks right through his smoke, mollies towards this hell position, just a lot of presence being created. And you'll see that actually at this point, he goes a little bit early in and pushes down before his team is quite ready to trade as they are not quite all the way down secret yet. And this actually gives Box there a lot of time to reposition. But thankfully for Sprout and Favin, they do end up closing this round out. But this is a more typical round for Favin on the T side of Nuke. So this round right here will show Favin actually working the door on the T side of Nuke, and he will nade it open, smoke to give himself some room. The Molly actually pushes him to the side, and J.O. doesn't recognize that a player could be here, so he takes a little bit of a risk as he pushes through, and Favin plays the numbers by the book. Given that his team now has an advantage, he will fall off of the angle, and Sprout can make a really solid mid-round call because of this. So they will use four of their players to clear ramp, and Favin, never really the player to go first in situations like this, where it's kind of a hard entries job to make something happen here. There's a the flash that comes out. He's right behind it in this situation and they actually kind of stall in ramp for a little bit and you'll see that this actually comes back to bite them in that box makes a really nice proactive play and Favin doesn't quite hit the shot to get the return and they're really getting picked apart in a round like this but you'll see that Sprout still want to slow it down they want to actually move around the map check out if there's any CTs that are going to give them any picks during those rotations and they still try to work together in a 2-1 more or less and it will be Favin to go out the door with Slacks. Uses his utility as best as he can, but his teammate behind him actually dies this time around. And Favin, he really does everything he can in this round, but it's just everybody falling, getting picked apart, and Sprout aren't able to convert around like this. But you see kind of what Favin does on Sprout's T side of Nuke. I figure we couldn't do a Favin profile also if we didn't get to a pistol round. So Favin. Busts out the CZ, really swift kill on a SDY, continues to hold the spray to find the kill on a mirror, and doesn't stop quite right there. Keeps on going. Yep, that's right. Favin finds three on the round. And now it's a five on two advantage for Sprout against Spirit here at Dreamhack Open January. DH Open number 43. And he makes his way actually pretty deep, but decides against actually trying to push through showers and decides to hold a very long angle which I don't think the CZ can hit reliably whatsoever. But this time around, just wants to help out his team. And he kind of gets shifted a lot in this round, but decides to just smoke that angle off. Then is able to move back towards T-Con there. And actually, he is going to just kind of pressure this situation. Still a lot of time on the clock for Spirit, and he doesn't want to give up any kind of advantage still. So notice he just falls off the angle, despite how hot he started this round. Doesn't want to give it all away. So he'll just play in ladder for the rest of his time. I don't know why he makes noise there. I feel like he did that on purpose, just to make people think a little bit, but maybe it was by accident. I, I actually just don't, I'm not sure what was going through his head there, but doesn't spot anything. And with 20 seconds left, silent drops on the ladder and then just decides to go for some timing peaks towards T-Con. He hasn't been spotted yet. His teammate Speedy got first contact, and Favin's able to finish out the round with a nice 4K there. Although it took a while, he gets it all done, uses every bullet to do it. Favin's typical position on the CT side of train is towards the bomb train on the left side, and to really be the ladder guy all in all. Early in this round, he'll set up Cressy with a nice flash so that Cressy can take some space towards Olaf there. And then Favin, he's still worried about Pop Dog and doesn't want to play it from the bomb site itself. So he throws a Molly in and recognizes that there is some pressure coming out of T-Con from Spirit here. So he goes for a little bit of a peek right there. And Dexter actually isn't quite aware that his body is sticking out just a little bit. And Favin then inserts himself into Pop Dog here. And he actually played this one overall pretty well other than the fact that he gives up a free 1v1 but he actually didn't really get flashed by SDY and the fact that he dies there is kind of more of a 50-50 fight as opposed to a, a disadvantageous one and actually when a player lands like that you usually would think that you know their their falling or landing accuracy would help you in that duel so Favin takes a fight that he feels like is okay but it doesn't quite work out. So Favin's actually responsible for quite a bit on the Sprout T side of train 
he is not only responsible with for pop dog but also box all so we'll see in this round here that he actually just silent drops down the ladder in order to take this space down here and i found this kind of risky overall but he seems comfortable doing it and knows when he can and cannot so i think the read that spirit were probably not in the ladder room was probably just due to the fact that they got that one kill they smoked off that position early on and so if he wants to take that 1v1 with anybody and they offer it then you might as well to try to even out the numbers but he's also responsible for box hall and you'll see that after he waits at this position for quite a while he actually just falls back with his team so they make their way back towards the B bomb site, and they're in a 3v5 de deficit right now. And you'll see that despite the structure of Sprout in this round not actually paying off for them as they are picked apart in the default more or less, it's Favin who continues to be the bailout player for them in situations such as this. He gets to bait Cressy there, but then throws a one-way smoke for that lower ramp that now Speedy can post up on here. And then Favin actually decides to use the one-way smoke himself by pushing on through it so magix magix actually spams through the smoke and now Favin just decides to go right through it he catches magix off on a really nice timing and speedy's entry onto the site was huge as well now Favin takes a really great advanced positioning good off angle and now just plays in the most annoying fashion he possibly can just avoids mirror and makes this really hard on him and also just kind of dances around Dexter on top of that. And you can see how just annoying it is to play against Favin once he actually has some space to work with. Although he does give up a free 1v1 to Dexter, who busted out the USP to find that kill, Speedy will still be able to convert this one in the clutch. So just shows the default position for Favin here and how still they need him to do a lot in some of these rounds. Seems typical for... A lot of Sprout games. Probably more so than it should be, to be completely honest with this team. Sprout really like to mix up the spots that their players play on the CT side. In the same demo, I've actually seen Favin play about four different positions, but I would say that his overall just favorite position or his real spot is towards this Ivy side of A. And you'll see how he plays it here, that he really kind of strikes a balance between using a lot of utility and just a brawly sort of style in the way he just wants to fight this out so good decision making there to just shoot through the smoke in taking out axile as axile was really letting his position no uh, be known to favin so that's going to be a freebie for him and then favin he just it, he really just does continue to face this angle using the pylon right there to actually have a nice little off angle and you can see that he actually is kind of priming himself to actually go for more uh, but he is indeed push forward by the molly on top of that and then just continues to hold the line will continue to kill hobbit and when they're in a four when his team is in really big man up situations i have noticed that favin likes to get a little bit more aggressive you know find that last kill be that final info player you know playing for info is the call getting the kill is the name of the game and that's what favin does on the ct side so here's a round where favin is playing towards the short position the ivy side of A right here, and he's actually smoked off of the angle by Gambit in this round, and Gambit just take their time with their ramp pressure, and Favin handles this really well. He actually doesn't get engaged early on in these fights, and it's actually his teammates who do some of the work at on this round, but Favin is just spraying through the smoke, you know, hoping that somebody's there, and then he actually throws a really cool smoke in that this segments, the way that this segments is that Essentially, if anyone swings to the right of him, it's really awkward for them to try to fight him, find a trade here, and Favin gets a free 1v1 with anybody that might be down the scaffolding or towards A main. Even though this was a risky peak, given that his team had a two-man advantage, now he's able to just hold this position outright by himself, and no one else really has to be pushing towards A, as he can just secure this whole space by himself. And Shiro, even though Shiro, he had the op, even though he's really quick with it, Favin's angle is just a little bit too strong, and that smoke makes it pretty difficult for Shiro to see him on top of that. And you'll see that the way that Favin wants to convert the rest of this round is kind of just playing off of his teammate. You'll see that Speedy has backed up right next to him. They're in a nice little kind of not, I wouldn't say crossfire, but a way that they're just holding each other's backs. And so Favin, knowing that he's that he has low HP, is actually going to show kind of the risk that he takes in a situation like this. I found this one pretty interesting overall. Despite having 3 HP, he actually goes for a pretty risky pre-fire in my opinion. But it actually works out just because he has really good spray control. So you'll see that as the player does push up to contest him in this spot, he actually just lines up the shot, continues to spray. You know, about seven bullets swivels to the left. He's able to take down Inters on top of that. And with that pre-fire, he not only 
finds the kill, but he keeps himself alive, secures some more money for Sprout, is able to find the second kill on top of that, able to help out his teammate, and that just shows kind of the skill of Favin in these kind of weird situations. Favin does one thing, and one thing only on the T side of Vertigo. He throws the Lurk Smoke out here towards the scaffolding, and he plays behind it. This is his play on nearly every single round that I have seen from him, and he gets two kills against Gambit by doing such, but it was a fake as Gambit are making their way, knowing that Favin, being Favin, will create a lot of pressure and make things very difficult for Gambit in situations such as that. And they hightail it towards B, they win the round because he finds that 2k entry, and that's just what Favin does. So I couldn't do a profile on Favin without showing you guys how he's really the player I would call the bailout guy for Sprout. He starts this round as he does many others by throwing his little lurk smoke towards yellow. And then because he's not able to find a pick with it, he decides to reroute with the rest of his team back on towards B. And after a little bit of a, a light hit from them as they have a single smoke and a flash, they actually make their way on forward and... Cressy kind of interestingly moves around Inters, who's there at that half wall. The kills come out, and Favin makes his way onto the bomb site in a two-on-three situation. And at this point, they have to try to win this round to keep their match alive. Spamming through the smoke, he's able to find Favin. And this is just a bold peek onto Shiro, and he takes him down. I'm not even sure how that works, but either way, he gets the final kill onto Nafini as well. And this is a round that... Favin will seem to deliver probably once a BO3 for Sprout, I would say. it's pre I'm pretty confident about that, too. He usually just finds himself winning rounds like that, so had to throw one in here. Favin is normally one of the B players for Sprout, and despite the fact that he's normally a rifler, he has at time picked up the op when they're having difficulty, as you can see that they're 0-5 down right now against Amiga, and playing that off angle right there and re-peeking into these fights multiple times shows that he's very comfortable with the weapon, that he's not really afraid of adjusting things, and shows that his versatility as a player is what gives him so much value for his team. This round more or less shows everything that Fobin accomplishes for Sprout, in that he's able to take a lot of space with some very clean shots, as he finds right there, and the fact that he's able to use his utility very well in order to counter the plays from opposing teams. So, Early on, we just saw that he found a really nice headshot as the player was jumping over the half wall. And then now he just takes the space back towards Banana. And this is something you just don't usually see from players on the T side uh, on the Banana position. Is that he is actually going to handle this himself. In that he throws a molly for the corner there. It was a flash for himself as well. And then he just pushes on forward. Here is the flash that is actually coming his direction. But decides to actually push right behind this Molotov, recognizing the exact amount of space he can take here. And even though there could be a player at Sandbags, he recognizes that there is a 5v4. He doesn't need to keep contesting for this kind of space. But if anybody wants to give him potentially another kill as they run through the smoke, that would be, uh, I mean, he's going to take that all day. So then he groups up back with his team, doesn't take any unnecessary risks here. And now kind of has a wonky time in the smoke, as we'll see, as he just kind of hangs out right here. He can't actually see just yet. He hasn't jumped up. But as soon as his team is ready to pounce, he actually then does decide it's his time to strike as he jumps up onto the box and helps his team push into the site. And uh, all in all, just a space creator on Inferno, and then he's able to take Banana with resources that he uses himself. Doesn't have to be set up for too much, just does it, and this is pretty typical from what you'll see from Favin. I hope you guys enjoyed my scouting report on Favin. I would want to give you guys a couple of concluding thoughts here where I just want to highlight the fact that one, Favin is an extremely clutch player. Two, on the CT side, that when he's in control of the situations, he can be a real rock on the bomb sites and knows how to play off of teammates incredibly well. And on the T side, he is actually extremely good at just exercising the right amount of aggression and knowing what he can take away from the opponent's all the time and for that reason he's a super valuable asset in that players such as him that can basically just do exactly as much as they can in rounds to get the most amount of space with the least amount of resources are always going to be incredibly valuable in making an IGL's life a lot easier and I actually wanted to bring up the fact that if I were to relate 
him to a player who's kind of more in the top 10 teams right now. I don't know if Heroic are actually still there, but I would actually relate him to Stown because I feel like Favin is a little bit more aggressive than Stown, but he has a lot of the same attributes in the way that he plays, especially the fact that on the CT side, he's a secondary opper on top of that. And I think that Favin's game is actually surprisingly well-rounded for the most part, but there are a couple of things that he would need to develop if he were to reach a level such as Stown's. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment if you like the video. And as always, being toxic is a choice.